Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media and welcome to another installment of This Week in EDM where we go over songs that came out this week in EDM. As always, they are in a Spotify link down below if uh, Spotify is your chosen platform. Um, but uh, other than that, let's hop into it. No trash songs this week. Let's head into songs that I think are bad personally. Again, just remember these are my opinions. Um, don't take them as gospel truth. Uh, we've got Rai 10 and a craze featuring Blue Pill with Squad Anthem. Um, you know, the first and third drops weren't all that terrible, to be honestly, but, uh, man, everything about this track was laughable, uh, personally. Um, the vocals I thought were super cringy. Um, the, like, <laughs> I don't know, I'm, I'm honestly surprised the track was as long as it was, um, but this just did not land for me. There was random hits and samples all over the place that I thought were really weird and bizarre. Um, yeah, if you enjoyed this, please tell me what you liked about it. Up next, we've got Troy Boy and or Armani White with Shut It Down. Uh, Armani White is definitely the best part of this track, I would say, as the production is really dull. It's just the simplest of trap beats with really more random samples thrown in this song as well. And um, I don't know, I just found that this one did not work for me uh, at all. Then we've got Stonebank Low. Uh, this is probably the first Stonebank song I would ever say that I really did not enjoy, and I listened to his entire discography. Um, Hardstyle's also never really been my jam, so take this with a grain of salt. Um, I know he's done a lot of happy hardcore in the past, but like pure hardcore just is not my, or Hardstyle isn't my, my flair. And um, yeah, uh, like the... In the first bit of the drop, the synth patterns felt like they were out of tempo or out of beat, um, and the hardstyle hits felt relatively weak to me too. Um, yeah, I just I just did not like this track. This felt like it was thrown together haphazardly a little bit. It was super short too, at like just over two and a half minutes or something like that. I just didn't didn't like it. So sorry, sorry, Stonebank. Then we've got David Guetta, Area Star, and Lil Durk with Big F U. Uh, just a real nothing burger of a song. It's boring, and that's all I have to say about it. Then we've got Glantis and Neon Trees with Dream Team, a song that I was hoping for was going to be good because actually uh, Neon Trees and Glantis are both kind of guilty pleasures of mine, but um, this is just all the worst parts of modern pop, honestly. It's a bit of a drag of a beat, poor songwriting. I thought the mixing was really flat. Um, I don't even see pop heads really loving this song a ton, so I just thought it was, uh, yeah, not great. Then we're moving into the meh category songs that I thought were meh. We've got Bauer, Can I Stay, or Can I Say, sorry. Um, Sexy House is back, and Bauer is the one to do it. Uh, pretty simple house beat here, but nothing too overly entertaining for me. We've got Cascade on my way. The Redux uh, number six EP is out now from Cascade. And uh, considering how much I loved his last release that was actually on this EP, um, this was more of his kind of same old, same old standard Cascade. Um, nothing crazy, but uh, kind of just basic Deep House track uh, with little synth hits here and there that um, Cascade's been doing for years and years that has worked, um, but is getting a little stale at this point. So uh, yeah, not too on fire for that song. Uh, then we've got Inzo with bass in Yo Face, uh, the first cut off of a new house EP from Inzo. Uh, and it, it's not bad. Uh, it's got some neat tonal movements and synth hits, but it's fairly tame, all things considered. Uh, then we've got Elenium Excision Wooly uh, featuring Valerie Broussard with Zombie. Uh, yeah, first off, I don't get the point of those i don't get the songwriting here i don't get the why zombie is a thing it's like it's all about this like mental warfare this mental battle and then it's like zombie and it's like are you just saying uh, like zombies dead and that's why you're just saying zombie like because they or because they eat brains and you're just dead in the brain i didn't really get the lyrics um and i thought the uh drops were also just kind of just standard melodic dubstep um but not in like the what i've heard a million times there, there was definitely some uh uniqueness to this track but i just felt it kind of hit all the same melodic tropes that i had been not loving for a while so uh yeah i just felt like there wasn't a ton and honestly i thought the excision drop was the best one the middle drop um i didn't love the first and last one the last one really was underwhelming too um but uh yeah They've got Armin Van Buren, Zor Zorro, I guess, <laughs> and uh, Yola Rakoba with God is in the Sound Waves. Um, structurally odd trance track here where the song feels like it's kind of out of place in some areas. It should be one area, but it's not. Um, but uh, yeah, I did really get... Um, uh, I did actually I should say like the drops like I thought they were not bad but um, yeah I don't know I just in overall I just thought the song was okay I did like the vocal chopping uh, in the drops as well but um, yeah I thought it was okay 
Then we've got Adventure Club and Codeco with Feels Like You. Uh, in only what I would call, I would say, melodic DNB, I would say this track is fairly different stylistically in, in terms of it's not really fully melodic dubstep and also fully not DNB. It's kind of somewhere in the middle of hybrid fusion. But um, yeah, it was a simple structure uh, with standard production elements, and I thought it was uh, just okay. I've got Black, T Black Tiger Sex Machine, Eddie, and Wiremere with Bounce. The new Portals LP is out now by Black Tiger Sex Machine. And um, I don't know, this one I thought was kind of disappointing to me. This is one that I expected to be a little bit more magical because um, I thought I like all three producers here. But um, yeah, it didn't quite have that big sound to it or big power that I would have expected in addition of having Eddie and Wiremere here. But um, yeah, I would fair say it's a fairly standard Complexo track from BTSM here. And uh, in the end, I just... Uh, I thought it was okay, just like most of the other tracks here in May. They went Peekaboo and uh, I want to say Liney uh, with like that uh, quite the wonky tune with kind of hints of vomit step. And uh, yeah, it's got a minimalistic beat to go with a very commanding bass hits all throughout. And um, I thought it was okay. I've got Nero Truth. Uh, Nero looks like they're making a real comeback here uh, this time around, and this track is going to be the one to kick it off. Um, it's kind of got this sciencey vocal samples that I wasn't all for, uh, and honestly, I thought the drops were a bit of a letdown. They kind of just happened. They were built up, and then they kind of just went into it without any real punch or power behind it. Um, yeah, I was uh, I was I was whelmed. I would say by this track, but I'm I am still very excited for an upcoming album, hopefully. But uh, yeah, this track in particular, I was okay on. Then we've got Coven with Never Have I Felt This, the VIP, out now on NCS. Uh, was never really over the moon about the original here, so this VIP didn't really provide too much more of a mix-up for me personally. And so, uh, yeah, didn't quite feel like it kind of was the quintessential modern drum step from Coven. I think they've done some drum step that was a little bit more uh, impactful, I want to say, on the hits. But uh, still a song I enjoyed. I just uh, know I've heard uh, stuff that I preferred more from Coven in terms of their drum step sound, so... Then we've got Disclosure looking for Love the Duskus remix. A more chilled out remix of what was the, in my opinion, the best track of their LP, of the Disclosure LP. But um, does kind of kill the energy of the song a bit. Obviously going for a more chilled out track, but um, obviously it's the, the trade-off of it being a little bit more relaxing than it kind of was uh, energetic. But uh, yeah, that is that. As we move into Karma Fields and Transviolet with Pure Happiness. A, a simple Deep House Club beat with some nice mixing. Um, but yeah, relatively simple for a Karma Fields track. Um, it is nice, but uh, I just kind of expected a little bit more. And I know Karma Fields is a, bit, a little bit more minimalistic and simplistic as of late. But uh, I just feel, feel like I want some old school, out there, left field Karma Fields. Uh, but that was not it, which is okay. Uh, then we're moving into the last 10 songs of the week that I want to talk about, and they're all in good, uh, all in the good category. Uh, we're starting off uh, with surprisingly Grey uh, with Contra. Um, what a world we live in where Grey made a track that I genuinely uh, enjoyed. Uh, it's a bit of a tribal trap banger uh, with some fun elements to it and melodies. I thought the mixing was okay, um, but I think the production does a great job on this track. I think the sounds are quite unique, and I actually like this one from Grey. And then we got Muzz, Pressure on the Masses. A little bit more of an atmospheric drum and bass tune from Muzz here. Um, less kind of balls to the walls drop, but more of a prevalent kind of undertone all throughout that is a little bit more uh, solid and there, a little more prevalent. But um, yeah, another solid Muzz track, I would say. Then we've got uh, Kuzuki and Direct with Hold You. Uh, really nice and serene down-tempo track here from these two. Uh, I actually found it really somber at some points, um, but yet beautiful and is one of the better kind of chilled out down-tempo tracks I've heard uh, this year, personally. Big fan. And then we got Moss and Strictly, or Moss and Example with uh, Strictly for The. Um, this is like a pseudo-UK grime track that uh, imitates that of the new Skrillex sound we heard from uh, Quest for Fire uh, with a bit of a kind of bass, deep house, grime fusion of style stuff. But uh, that being said, uh, I would more or less just listen to the Skrillex album over this one. It's not that it's um, a bad song. I think it's actually good. Uh, but uh, I just think Skrillex did it a little bit better um, in terms of trying to imitate that sound. So, And I'm sure they've probably been doing it long before Skrillex has, and I'm just ignorant to the fact. But uh, I did like the newer Skrillex stuff more than this, uh, considering they were very similar sounds. 
Uh, and then we got Caster featuring Diandra Faye with Madness Calls. The new Forbidden Arts EP is out now from Caster. Uh, and this is a beautiful blend of dubstep elements and rock instrumentation. It is a stellar opener to the EP as well. Uh, and Caster, I think, has been on a tear recently. And so, yeah, I liked it. And we've got Bose, Ellis, and Sarah DeWarren with IRL. Um, now, this is the instinct I want to hear. Uh, the track didn't, like, blow me away, but I thought this was um, a, a great blend of simple melodies and jittery production that makes for both a commercially viable track as well as a creative gem. And this is the Monster Cat instinct I want to hear. This is it. Um, this is a great track. And up next, we've got Antagonizer with Bloodsport. The Omni Violence EP is out now. Go listen to it, please. It is a mixture of Crywolf and Away, two artists I really, really enjoy. And uh, yeah, Antagonizer just has this really unique sound that's like an alternative experimental dubstep um, that I personally have really resonated with. It's spooky and terrifying uh, and is mixed to perfection. Uh, big fan of Antagonizer. Uh, next up, we got Zavi and a Cloudy Sky with Overflow, a six and a half minute beautiful track that is the perfect blend and culmination of these two artist sounds and styles. Um, I love the vocals from Zavi on verse one and Cloudy Sky on verse two. I like the extended outro and extended last movement. I think it flows into each other really well, um, the different parts of the track, and I just really enjoyed the song. This is one where I it, it I had expectations for a Zavi and a Cloudy Sky uh, track at some point, and this one actually met and exceeded those expectations. So, uh, and our penultimate track of the week is Rebel Scum and Tasha Baxter with Endgame. Uh, I'm really in love with this track. I think it's got tons of energy. I think Tasha killed her vocals. Uh, the beat was pumping and on full throttle all throughout. Um, yeah, this is one of my favorite Uncaged, uh, Monster Cat Uncaged tracks this year, I would say. And I think it's a great track. And the number one track of the week, in my opinion, at least, is Chase and Status with uh, featuring Clementine Douglas with Say the Word, a single number three from an upcoming album that I have been highly anticipating um, from Chase and Status. Chase and Status, uh, if you say it in the UK um, dialect, it sounds a lot better, Chase and Status versus Chase and Status, uh, like I would as a... American, although I'm Canadian, but um, yeah, I just thought the mixing was incredible as always with Chase and Status here. I uh, wasn't on board with the synth melody the first time around. I've been listening to the Boiler Room set from uh, at least one half of Chase and Status recently, and um, I uh, first time I heard it, I was like, okay, but then I was like, you know what? I actually really, really like this melody now. So um, yeah, I, I, yeah, it's been stuck in my head, honestly, since the Boiler Room, and I'm excited this one was released as a single, and I think you should go listen to it now for some... Uh, uh, nice UK drum and bass. But, uh, yeah, other than that, uh, that has been This Week in Let me know what you think of any and all songs in the comment section below. But uh, yeah, I've been Dakota from Botab Media, and I'll see you guys in another video.